The traffic offered a welcome delay to Peggy as she sat on the relatively short bus journey between Hertfordshire and the Cotswolds. Geographically, the places were close, but in terms of lifestyle and what the separate regions meant to her, they were worlds apart. The outskirts of Gloucester had offered her such beauty in her younger years. Aesthetically, the region was stunning, everyone knew that. But it had also been the setting where she'd fallen madly, deeply, head over heels in love. Excuse me, I, I wondered if you might be able to help, asked a silky smooth voice as Peggy arranged a pot of flowers in the middle of a floristry. It took a moment before she realised the question had been intended for her. She double took as a pair of striking blue eyes gazed unwaveringly into her own. Honesty, loyalty, truth and promise all became apparent at once as something stirred from deep inside of her. She was transfixed by the tall, handsome stranger, so much so that she forgot to speak. Ma'am, the voice continued, are you all right? He asked, the faintest of dimples appearing on his left cheek. Her heart melted. I, I, yep, yeah, yes I am, she replied with far too much enthusiasm. She cleared her throat as she composed herself, suddenly aware of her bad posture. She shuffled her feet and stood tall before looking up at him again. She couldn't help but break into a smitten smile as another silence ensued. Uh, could you help me? he repeated. Oh, oh, help! R right, of course! H how can I help you? Well, I'm looking for some flowers, he began. <laughs> well, she snorted, you've come to the right place. Her attempt at humour was weak at the best, at best, and as the third unnatural silence developed, the man offered a bewildered smile, which Peggy regretfully believed to be one of pity. Quite, was all he managed before reverting back to his query. I'd like something colourful and big, and, and something that smells sweet, will we'll keep well and say, I love you, he insisted. I love you repeated Peggy in a dreamy tone as she gazed at him. He studied her with a look of peculiarity and, becoming aware of this, she snapped out of her daze. I, I love you. Yes, easy, she said with confidence as she began to walk slowly through the aisle. Well, the first thing to do is to establish a colour. So, does the lucky lady like the colour pink, she asked. No, answered the man abruptly. She said it's too sissy. Oh, she responded in surprise. Purple? Poor man's pink. White? Boring? Blue? Too masculine. Red? Makes him angry. Oh my, Peggy uttered, taking a moment to think. Yellow? Too predictable. Wow, said Peggy as she widened her eyes. Sounds like quite a fuss pot. Are you sure this woman is for you? As the words came out of Peggy's mouth, even as she was surprised, she had no idea what came over her. She didn't flirt or become competitive over a man's affections. Yet there she was, this extremely pleasant, sweet-natured young woman, insulting a complete stranger to gain some sort of advantage. Slowly she forced herself to look up into those deep, soothing eyes to check that she hadn't offended him. And for my mother said. Oh, Peggy sighed, trying to hide her delight in the fact that not only was the man truly kind, but now she was afforded the freedom to imagine them together. Suddenly it came to her. Orange, she yelped. This time the suggestion wasn't met with an instant dismissal. Indeed, the handsome stranger looked pensive. Of course, at that point, he could have been wondering how best to get away from her. She monitored him closely before pushing. It, it, it's bright, vibrant, sunny, all of uh, which I'm sure is in keeping with your wonderful mother, she crept. And if you buy some Princess Irene tulips, they'll blossom beautifully and last right through the summer. Finally, the man looked up and smiled. Yeah, I think I'll take those. Thanks. Peggy beamed with pride at the excitement that spread across his face. He held out his hand. Malcolm, he said strongly. She placed her hand in his. He held it delicately, 
but she could sense the innate power that they possessed. Her skin was soft and warm. Once again, Peggy had started to drift into a world of fantasy. She sensed yet another awkward silence developing, but this time she was determined to avoid it. Therefore, she simply smiled politely, released his hand, and acted completely aloof. No problem at all, Malcolm. The tulips are over near the window, she confirmed, nodding in their direction before spinning around and elegantly stepping away. Her tactic work worked, as throughout Malcolm's journey to the flowers and then to the counter, he was unable to take his eyes off her as she walked around, feigning more interest in the flowers than in him. He handed the large bunch of tulips over the counter, only partially paying attention to the grumpy old woman who ran his purchase through the till. Malcolm felt so content as he watched Peggy lean over, brushing her long, dark hair behind her ears as she smelled the fragrance of the plants. Excuse me, would it be possible for you to tell me her name, he asked the old lady. Oh, replied the woman rather abruptly. He nodded over in Peggy's direction. The woman screwed up her nose and shrugged. Oh, the hell would I know? She doesn't work here. Whenever Peggy heard a debate on love at first sight, or even whether love existed at all, she grew warm with nostalgia, for she knew those things were real, and she was part of a very exclusive club to have experienced them. Malcolm went on to become her husband, and her first impressions of him turned out to be true. He was a wise, fun-loving, good-natured man who would do anything for her. Even when times were low, such as a handful of failed pregnancies that they had lived together, through together, as they desperately fought to have a child. Even then, he would somehow continue to smile, a sight so pure that it could shelter her from any storm. Hope. That was the overwhelming feeling that Peggy remembered from her younger adult life. A feeling that she attributed to the man who would be her husband for 47 years. It was because her feelings between Malcolm and the Cotswolds merged beyond clarity that she eventually found the place so difficult to visit. And since Peggy and her husband were no longer together, she limited her visits to just once a year. It had been over three years since she'd seen Malcolm in person, but still in her mind she would always be his. Her head fell against the side of the window as she watched the endless stream of rain lash down around against the world around her. The greyness of the sky matched her mood as she inched past familiar landmarks that woke several for near-forgotten memories. Amazing how pleasure and pain can be so close, she thought before closing her eyes. The darkness of her eyelids draped like the large velvet curtains of an auditorium, allowing her to replay particular moments from her history as though she had attended a private screening of her own life, which was screened on old 8mm film, offering sharp flashes of colour among the grainy images, but with no sound. As Peggy sat in a cafe that overlooked the church where she and Malcolm had been married, she fidgeted, rather nervously twisting her cup on its saucer. Small remnants of tea that lay splashed and spilled on the table were further signs of angst. Suddenly she looked up. Her heart fluttered and her eyes welled as she saw him there, standing on the other side of the street. To Peggy he looked as dashing as ever. He offered a warm, confident smile which made her giggle with joy. How did he always manage to bring out the child? Side by side, they took slow, synchronized steps as they made their way down to the churchyard. The heavens above had given them a fresh blue sky as well as the wondrous beauty of a vivid rainbow as the sun helped capture their time together in a sepia glow. I've missed you, she said. Malcolm smiled before speaking with utter sincerity. And I you, my dear. Do you still think about me? she asked, looking at him with hope. Do you really have to ask? he replied. No, I suppose not. Malcolm stopped and placed both hands on her shoulders. He attempted to look deep into her eyes. 
She resisted for a moment before gazing up at him like she did all of those years ago. What we had, what we have, is forever. Life is always thrown as problems, turmoil. Things happen that people regret, but when it's what's in here that counts, he said, as he placed his hand over her heart. She closed her eyes and sighed gently as she responded to his touch. Don't you ever forget what's in here. I won't, she promised. He looked at her closely to check that she had truly listened before starting to walk away. She followed as they both absorbed the beauty of their surroundings, reminiscing in the memories of their wedding day. Thank you for coming to see me. I know you don't enjoy coming back here, but it does mean the world to me. It's no trouble, she dismissed, beginning to look rather cheery. I love you, Malcolm said. Peggy stopped hesitantly as her bottom lip trembled. I don't know how much longer I can do this, she blurted. I don't know if I can go on. I don't want to go on, she shrieked as she dropped to her knees. It took a few moments to compose herself before opening her eyes. Her distress was clear and she knew it would never go away. The permanent reminder before her always played such havoc with her weakened heart as a stunning bright orange butterfly landed on her husband's headstone. She recognised it as a sign that he was still with her.